What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. This week, I'm gonna try and paint minis without using my busted hand. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that in a little bit. About a month ago, I got a relatively innocuous cut on my finger. It didn't seem like much then, and even though I cleaned it and put Band-Aid on it, things didn't really go well. A couple of weeks ago, I ended up going to the doctor to have it looked at. While well, the doctor cleaned everything up, gave me a stack of bandages and wraps and antibiotics, with the instructions not to use that finger to rest my paintbrush on or use it for pretty much anything else. It needs to heal properly. So effectively, that has put me in a position where I can't really paint, yet somehow need to make content for this miniature painting channel. Or at least, you know, I'd like to. I talked about this a little bit when I was working on my last project, a scaled down version of Conquest First Blood. And a lot of you thought it would be pretty funny if I just used my other hand to try and paint instead of foregoing painting altogether. At first, I kind of dismissed the idea. I'm not left-handed and I really didn't want to commit any effort to models only to have them turn out less than great. But it also got me thinking. There have to be ways to paint minis that doesn't require too much effort one way or another. And if I could just lean into certain techniques or products that can help me do that, then I wouldn't necessarily have to skip painting while I give my hand a break. I wanna keep rescuing models, even while I'm down. So we're just gonna see how this goes. It also makes me think that there are probably a lot of people out there possibly in this position where they might think they can't paint due to an injury or something else entirely. So hopefully some of these techniques help get those creative juices flowing so you can paint more minis. The first thing I thought I'd try was just painting with my offhand. I'm normally right-handed, so switching to my left doesn't exactly feel natural. Trying to work out the best way to accomplish this, I decided that trying to steady myself was probably the best option. I need a way to brace myself on the desk and keep control over the brush as much as possible. I taped a small box to a cutting mat so I could move it around but still have a large enough space that it wouldn't really move when I was painting. Then I taped a painting handle to the top of that box to keep the model from going anywhere. I opted for the GW painting handle because it has a removable and interchangeable head that just unscrews from the base. So I could change out the size if I wanted to put something bigger on the handle or change out a mini that was already on another head. For models, I decided to go through a bunch of used minis I have laying around and just pick out a few that seem pretty easy and a few that might be a little more difficult. The idea is that there would be a good variety to test out a few ways to get good results without too much effort. I wanna try several techniques and styles of painting to see what's gonna work best for the time being. I've gathered a selection of models that I think would probably work best for this kind of situation. If you find yourself in a position where you're limited in terms of usage, you know, like I am, in this case, I hurt myself. So I'm trying to figure out how to get a really good result without having to do too much of the heavy lifting with my normal dominant hand. In a lot of the cases, as I'm gonna point out and show you, this was all done with products so to speak. This wasn't much of technique so much as just knowing the order of operations and how to get a specific type of look. These tanks in particular were done with basically just washes. I did some chipping medium over the base layer, uh, which was brown. I put a bunch of ivory on, some whites, that kind of thing, and then chipped it away. So these are the kinds of things that I'm hoping to be able to achieve, and hopefully that'll help you out in getting some of the stuff going if you're having any issues like I am. Pox walkers in particular, I think are really good for something like this. They have minimal amount of actual paintable area. And what I mean by that is they kind of have a couple of things going on with them. They have skin, they have weaponry, they have some clothing, depending on which model it is. So I think the idea is gonna be, we're gonna try and get in there, make some interesting looking skin tones with minimal usage of probably contrast paints and then dry brush the whole thing in order to kind of tie everything together. Here's what I mean. I 
I have a Prime Mini and a way to hold it down and brace myself. For this model in particular, I know I don't have to be super precise, which is why I started with it. I start by laying down some base color to the skin to give it some variety. These pox walkers have all sorts of little details on them that blend into the skin. So I wasn't too worried about spilling over anywhere because it's just gonna end up with a unified skin tone that goes over everything anyways. Once the base layers of the color went down, I took out some ivory and a dry brush. I went over the entire model to really bring all the colors together and basically highlight the model. If you follow that up with a fresh coat of speed paint or contrast paint on those highlights, the model looks pretty good. Honestly, that worked pretty well. Even using my left hand, I had a good place to brace myself and get the brush under control. And I could pivot my whole hand to place paint more precisely. Just kind of rest it there. It kind of makes you think though, this is something you're supposed to be doing when you paint normally, like if you didn't need to switch hands. Having several points of contact, bringing your elbows together and getting as steady as you can. If you're the kind of person who shakes a little while painting or just needs to be more precise or is trying to be, then you probably already know how important this is. So it makes perfect sense that it would work even if I'm using my left hand. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's excellent sponsor, CMOGames.com. CMO Games is an epic hobby store that has been selling online for more than 20 years. They focus on Games Workshop products, almost always selling at 15% off and they carry a wide variety of paints and supplies to get those minis painted. On top of a ton of tabletop games, board games, and TCGs, they carry hobby supplies, Pro Acryl, Vallejo, and Scale 75, just to name a few. So you can always find the supplies and paints that you need and get them shipped quickly and at a good price. CML Games also takes care of your pre-orders. So if you need to get in on the newest Games Workshop release, they go live at 12.01 a.m. on the absolute earliest day possible so you don't miss out. Head on over to cmogames.com using the affiliate link in the description below and check out this fantastic store. Using my link won't cost you anything extra, but greatly helps out the channel. So thank you. And thank you CMO Games for sponsoring miniature painting channels like this one. Now let's get back to those minis. Next up, products that do the work for you, sort of. When I was talking about my Death Guard army, this is pretty much what I meant. The models were all primed brown, got a spray of chipping medium, followed up by a coat of white paint. That means that when I come back to a model with a toothbrush and some water, the chipping medium will reactivate and give me a really cool chipped armor look. Super simple and something I know I can basically do with one hand. After that layer dries, I can use things like speed paints to fill in a bit of color and a thick coat of brown enamel to give the army that dirty Death Guard look. Only a few steps and out pops a pretty neat little guy. He looks pretty good. The rest of my Death Guard army was pretty much done in the same way. And what I've completed so far looks pretty good all together on the table. They look nice and cohesive. And yeah, I know this army still needs to be finished and we will get there, but that's for another time. So, you know, subscribe if you haven't. I did a similar thing with a Space Marine. Using a black primer as a base coat, I dry brushed all over the model with a bluish gray to give the edges a bit more color and definition. Then I took out these super handy dandy metallic permanent markers to fill in the rest of the color. Using Sharpies on models has been around for a while, but these particular markers have nice paintbrush tips, so they feel more like actually using a paintbrush. The coverage is surprisingly good and the metallic color is actually really not bad. Being able to steady my hand and not have to reload the brush actually made this process much easier. I was able to get into quite a lot of the model with this pen and get that metallic color blocked in. I didn't really bother with anything I couldn't reach or see. With a brush, I could have probably gotten around a little better since, you know, it's smaller, but this worked really well. And it's hard to see those areas that I missed when the model is just on the table. After the silver goes down, I'll use some Tamiya panel liner to bring out that definition on the metallics. Once dry, I can use the same pen to highlight back up and the model's pretty much done. I imagine just changing out colors with another chapter would be about the same amount of work here, but there would be the added step of really having to clean up the model after an oil wash, depending on the color. So, you know, if you like your models clean, it might be a little harder, but if you like them dirty, then you're good to go. Even then, spray painting with the color of your choice using the panel liner to 
actually line panels, and bringing in a Sharpie to fill in the metallics all feel pretty doable right now. I also did pretty much the same thing on a Necron model. Coloring the model in with a marker, washing it down and highlighting back up was incredibly quick and easy. The last thing I wanted to try was airbrushing. For the most part, you only use one hand when you airbrush anyway, so I set up my holder in a position where I could load it and mix paints, and that was easy enough to make work. Actually, airbrushing didn't feel that much different. My accuracy wasn't the best, but even after a few minutes, I started to adjust and it was working pretty well. Now granted, this isn't my best airbrush job, but I definitely think it's doable and probably the best way to get great results without doing too much work. Of course, I did come back in with a brush, and that was a little more difficult. Trying to be extra precise and pick out details was much harder. So I ended up dry brushing over a lot of it to kind of tie it together and hide the mistakes. Not exactly what you want, but pretty respectable results. Overall, this went much better than I expected. Being able to lean on specific techniques like dry brushing and washes really helped get these minis to a pretty good tabletop quality. And it kind of makes sense, right? Those are the things that a lot of us start off with when we get into miniature painting. They're tried and true techniques that do a lot of great work with very little effort. So even using the wrong hand for me, the results were still there. Yeah, they could have been better, but think of it this way. Today was kind of like my first day of painting models. I mean, sure, I knew some stuff, but it kind of felt like I was holding a paintbrush for the first time again, which is kind of a strange feeling to have. The point is though, that if you take the time to learn those things, to learn the techniques and ways of really maximizing results, it kind of doesn't really matter how you do it, because if you know the order of operations, you're still gonna get pretty good results. The real surprise for me was the airbrushing. I figured there was really no way I was gonna be able to make that work properly, but once I got used to the feeling, it wasn't that bad. Cleaning it out on the other hand was kind of a huge pain, but I wasn't using a cleaning pot or anything and that probably would have helped quite a bit. At the end of the day, a few more models got rescued and while the paint on them isn't the best, they are in fact painted. When it comes to wargaming, having painted models on the table is a great feeling and I've always found that it matters very little how well those models got painted. What does matter is that they are done and you learn something from that process, something to take into the next session and get more minis on the table. I do hope that this video helps you in one way or another. Maybe you're like me and you injured your hand while hobbying or you fell out of a tree and broke your arm. Either way, I hope you get better soon and get back to painting those minis. In the meantime, I hope these techniques can help you through and still get some of those gray models started or even finished up. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you enjoyed something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.